My name is Randy Pistachio. I'm the director of farm stewardship here at Long's Gardens, uh, where we grow about a thousand different varieties of iris. Uh, we also cover crop all of our pastures for a goat dairy uh, run by Growing Gardens. The composter was needed as a way to um, have a central location to uh, deposit all of the wasted goat food, um, alfalfa, hay, bedding, sawdust, as well as all their manure because we're really good at keeping our goat pens clean. Um, so we needed a central location to deposit that and hopefully accelerate its breakdown. The composter started as just a simple three bay system that we would just turn as needed. And then EcoCycle came to us with the proposition to maybe accelerate the process even more. And what that entails is solidifying the sides with plywood, putting in those channels that we uh, cover in the front, and then there is piping with holes drilled into it uh, down below the piles that will actually pump air up and through to keep it aerated. So instead of turning the pile once a week or so, uh, we only turn the pile when we feel like it's uh, done. So down here in the base of two of these bays, there are three perforated pipes. The perforations are actually on the bottom so that the air comes out the bottom and then flows up through like in that motion. And the air is piped in through a you know, a main distribution pipe that runs along the back. Um, and then all the pipes are covered with a looser uh, wood chip material. It's a little more permeable to let that airflow come back up through the pile. I've got a blower unit kind of behind me here that will pump air through and all of that is automatic. Uh, it's on a timer run by the solar system behind us. So the fan turns on for 30 seconds every 30 minutes. Um, and that seems to be a, a good balance of uh, pushing enough air through without drying the pile out. Got a conduit that has the solar cables coming in, charging this uh, portable generator. It can also be charged up with AC power as well. And then that is attached to the timer, which controls the, the uh, fan cycle. And then this is just a <laughs> pretty much a bouncy castle blower attached with some uh, rubber tubing to the PVC. And then in order to independently control each of our bays, since we have two of them, um, We've just got little tiny gate valves here so we can isolate one or the other. And that's what runs under each one of the bays and uh, circulates the air up and through the pile. The batch that I'm going to make today is probably about the 14th batch that we'll put through the system. And some of those have been rolled into another bay to make another batch. Uh, we will take raw materials, anything from the goat pens, some weeds will come from the farm. So we'll take all that raw material, put it into a storage bay. When we have enough material, we will build a layer about a foot deep um, in the bottom of the composter. We will soak it with water as evenly as possible. Sometimes we'll rake it around to make sure that it's uh, really soaking through. And we'll do that on repeat and we'll build the uh, compost as pretty much as high as we can. And then we'll cover up the front. Uh, so it's got four solid sides. Uh, give it a last good soak. Layering is certainly very important. We have a very carbon heavy mixture here and we do have some nitrogen, but it's good to have those uh, ingredients, the carbon and the nitrogen, so your greens and browns mixed throughout the whole pile. More importantly though, the moisture needs to be uh, layered properly, which is why we build sort of a foot at a time and make sure that gets soaked through. Whereas if you built the whole pile and tried to water it from the top, you would have 
a lot of pockets where it would be completely bone dry and you'd probably not really see much action at all. Once we uh, build the initial pile, we actually don't water it at all. That might be something that we learn could keep things accelerating a little quicker. Again, it is where this bin is located. It's not the easiest to get water to. And we come out here uh, once a day, check temperatures in six different locations, and make sure that things are heating up properly. So we'll do a 12 inch check and an 18 inch check at three different locations throughout the pile. So we get different readings of where it might be completely thermophilic or maybe there's a pocket that's not actually fully active. And once it's gone thermophilic, so four days at 131 degrees or higher, we call it pretty much good. And we'll be a little less uh, diligent about checking the temperatures but we'll uh, let it go down into more of a cure stage. And then pretty much when we need the, the space, we will uh, turn it into a different bin and let it sit until we're ready for it again. The first cycle that a lot of this raw material goes through kind of brings it to about a 40 to 50% decomposition stage. You can certainly see the process has started. Again, with some of the cold pockets or dry pockets that might have formed during uh, during building the pile, uh, there's some incomplete areas, but from raw material, three weeks, uh, 40 to 50 percent finished, we might not put that on our fields. However, if we ran it through a second cycle and brought it more to like a 60 to 70 percent stage, we could spread it onto our pastures as is, which is what we were doing with raw material anyway, so this would speed up that process. So this pile uh, just like all the other piles, has been through one cycle, one thermophilic cycle. So definitely got up to 131 degrees for about four days. And you can see it's definitely working. It's actually still hot to my hands. Um, so it was still working uh, even long beyond after I stopped taking temperatures. There's still some raw material, but uh, certainly a big difference from The raw material that we started with um, and again that was only about two weeks of this pile sitting there. We did keep it going up until about January I want to say and it was working well enough. <laughs> the cold will shut the microbial activity down and we did have a cold winter. Uh, perhaps in one of our more mild winters we could keep it going the whole time. Uh, one thing that does need to happen is the solar panel needs to be adjusted for the winter. Complaints about odors, we haven't heard a peep. So we are in a very much in a uh, urban neighborhood, uh, so we are always aware of odors and attracting uh, rodents or any kind of wildlife. Our neighbors who are directly downwind have never said a word. I don't think they're getting much more than what the goats produce on a daily basis by themselves. Uh, and it is certainly not anaerobic. Um, even when we've thought we've watered maybe too much uh, through the layers and came out the next day and smelled something a little more astringent, it was gone within less than 24 hours. So things are uh, really kept um, aerated through that pile with the blower system that's beneath there. We're definitely glad that we've done it. We needed a central place that wasn't just piling materials. It is great to show people, especially here in the city. Education is one of our, the major components of our farm here, right in the middle of Boulder. We do enjoy having groups out. It just gives us another thing to show them what happens with agriculture, kind of in their backyard. Uh, we're not really taking food scraps or anything right now, but the amount of material that the uh, goats produce in a day is pretty significant. So it's really great to be able to cycle those nutrients into a more usable form a lot faster than we were previously. Also seeing it run completely on solar. Those are just two 100 watt panels behind us. Now that's a really relatively cheap system to build. Make sure you have a good loader, certainly. I think if our loader was able to handle a little more weight, we could wet the material ahead of time as opposed to taking dry material layering it and wetting it like that 
Make sure you've got space to move around. One thing that would be really helpful is some sort of automatic watering. Uh, it would probably save 20 minutes per batch.